Today we're going to look at good versus not so good practices with respect to using your mobile phone. This video isn't really designed uh, to make me sound like, uh, like a cool fancy guy. I may sound like a boring guy, but it's meant to save your neck, not to sound cool. Welcome, I'm Olivier Girard, ergonomist, posture therapist, author of the posture manual and creator of three online posture programs. To avoid dogmas, let's start with biomechanics. You see, posture rule number two states that the neck can never be too relaxed. In other words, we should do everything that we can to relax the neck more. We cannot remove from our life everything that tenses up the neck, but our goal should be to minimize it. And what tenses up our neck? What we do with the neck? Five factors, forward head posture, extension, neck flexion, more than 20 degrees, and everything that's related to asymmetry. So that's five head factors. And next to that, we have four elbow factors. See, your elbows are comfortable, zero to 20 degrees sideways, zero to 20 forward, the rest tenses up the neck. So spreading the elbows more than 20 degrees, bringing them forward more than 20 degrees, pulling them back or raising them. These are the nine factors that we have to monitor. Now, let's look at how this applies to your mobile phone. See, basically, it's quite simple. Rule 2 states that your hands are comfortable somewhere around here and your eyes are comfortable somewhere around here. This is the reason why I, on a desktop you have your screen slightly lower than the line of your eyes and you have the keyboard right where your fingertips are. And therefore the vertical distance between the two is around this which is way bigger than the size of your mobile phone. So what happens when you have a mobile phone is either that you put it where your hands are comfortable and then you end up quickly with the forward head flexion more than 20 degrees or you put it where your eyes are comfortable but then we have this elevation flexion or elevation of the elbow i.e. shoulder flexion more than 20 degrees which is another risk for the neck. Additionally there's something more, which is that as the font size on the phone is small, we, due to visual tiredness after a while, we will go like this, forward head posture, which is another one of the nine factors, and actually the mother of all neck pains, headaches, and all that. And due to these biomechanical considerations, rough estimates, I mean, it's, it's dirty science, but it's just to give you an idea, are that every minute that you spend on your smartphone is equivalent to six minutes that you spend on your screen. How I came to that, I explained in the posture manual. Again, it's dirty science. Don't take me on that, but you know, that gives you some kind of an indication. This means that your mobile phone is an emergency device because when you use it, you mess up your neck six times more than when you use your uh, desktop. And a laptop would be a factor of three, by the way. So the smartphone is two times as risky as the laptop. As the smartphone is an emergency device, the measure number one to avoid neck pain is to wonder every time you take your phone, am I currently dealing with an emergency? If not, well, that can wait until you're on a better setup. So this is level one. Level one is avoid to find yourself in a toxic situation as much as you can. Level two is hardware, technical measures. And technical measures are depending on what you do with your smartphone. If you look carefully, there are actually a different use cases for your mobile phone. There's the use case where you watch your phone and actually you don't need your hands to interact. Yeah? That is typically if you watch a series. Another use case is when I need both my eyes and my hands. That is, for example, when I type a message. And the third use case is when I need neither my hands nor my eyes. I cannot really imagine a use case in which you need your hands and not your eyes, but sometimes you need neither one nor the other, for example, when you record a voice message. And you see, the difference between the three use cases is important, because if I need my eyes only, well, I'll put the smartphone where my eyes are comfortable, and I'm just not going to use my hands. 
So in this context, well, if I have done a proper setup, there's no big problem. If I need neither my hands nor my eyes because I'm sending a voice message, I'm free to choose my posture. When I send a message, I'm like this, for example. Again, no risk. When does the risk come? When you need both your hands and your eyes. And in this context, well, you'll need some kind of compromise between the two. You see, your eyes are comfortable here, your hands are comfortable here. In between the two is somewhere around that. You try to stay as much as you can within the 0 to 20 degrees here, and you try to not fall into flexion more than 20 degrees with regard to your eyes. So this brings your smartphone somewhere here, you see? And from there, your only job is to build something that links it to whatever it can rest on. So on my desk here, I would, for example, use a document holder, raise the document holder if needed, and that would support my phone in this position. When I'm kind of leaning down like this, I could use my armrests, and my armrest would help me to do the same. But in this position, I also need a headrest because my whole body is tilted back and without a headrest, I will have tension in the, in the front neck muscles to avoid that. Okay, so this is basically the idea and this is how you will identify the right accessory for you. Is your phone is supposed to be somewhere around here and what can keep it there without action of my muscles depends on whether you sit in bed, on your couch, at your desk, on your office chair, as I just showed. The third level is to say, well, look, I need to look at the time factor. Yeah? Uh, the better my position, the more time allowance I have. So if you didn't manage to do a proper setup and you like this, well, your time allowance is minimum. If you're doing what I was doing with my armrests like that, well, I can hold it a bit more, a bit more, not for hours. And the last intervention level is everything which is behavioral, which is monitor your posture. Why the last one? Because, well, it's easy to implement, you don't need to purchase anything, but habits are difficult to change and to sustain it over time is even more difficult. So in this case, a particular measure would be that when you flex your head, you make sure that you just flex it and keep your chin in its normal position. Don't let it glide forward. Yeah? That would be some kind of a behavioral measure. Another behavioral measure would be to say, well, look, I've been using my neck a bit too much, and therefore I will relax my neck with the upper body reset, which I link in the description, or with another neck uh, exercise, such as neck mobilization. So this is the intellectual reasoning uh, that you need to have with your phone. One, avoid finding yourself in this situation. Two, technical measures. Three, organizational measures. Four, behavioral measures. But the key point is really, bear in mind, if you're using your phone, are you really dealing with an emergency? If not, well, do what you can to postpone or cancel simply the activity.